நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் ப்ராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த தமிழ் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனோட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி த லிங்க் ஆஃப் த ஒரிஜினல் வேர்ஷன் தட் இஸ் அ தமிழ் வீடியோ இஸ் கிவன் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பாக்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் வீடியோ This is Astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. In my last video, I explained how a person can still live a successful life despite the Ascendant Lord being weak. In this video, I am going to explain first of all about Moon and in the forthcoming videos, I am going to explain the effects of Moon in different houses for the native of 12 different ascendants in the natural zodiac i can see the first comment of this live video guruji please tell the effects of moon from pisces to aries yes definitely i'm going to remember this point while i'm going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for every ascendant many people have a concern that i'm explaining only for the first six ascendants in detail and i'm rushing up regarding the effects of the planets for the other six ascendants mm, especially i'm rushing very fast right from sagittarius to pisces i'm going to take great care in managing the time and distributing it equally for all the ascendants this time the very first person who made the comment who requested me to start from pisces to aries have really read my mind i don't know who he or she is because i had the very same thought today uh, that why can't i explain uh, the effects of moon right from pisces ascendant to aries ascendant well before all that let me first of all explain about the planet moon astrology is a topic about which we can talk for lifetime because of shortage of time i am missing certain subtleties of astrological concepts there are thousands of subtleties about a planet about a star about different padas of the stars this is indeed the truth i am going to explain in this video what the moon will deliver when it resides in 12 different houses of the natural zodiac for different ascendants i often say that in a natal chart the luminous planets sun or moon should not lose strength because these are the two dominant luminous planets then comes the planets venus and jupiter which are natural benefics which are delivering the luxuries the pleasures etc the planets which can give luxuries and pleasures in a honest way such as jupiter and venus 
should not be spoiled in a natal chart. So you can ask me which planet should not be spoiled. I will definitely tell you that all the planets should be in good status. The fundamental truth is in whose chart moon is strong which is significator of mother which is a significator of mind is considered to be a complete man or woman. The stars through its own light energy makes a human being to act by passing their light energy through the moon. The nakshatras pass its light energy through the moon and let the events happen in the life of a human being or create the events or control the events in the life of the human being. This is the reason moon is considered to be the most important planet. Moon is Manokaraka and this mind is the reason for all. If I ask you a question, who are you? How do you respond? Are you the face of your body or the hands of your body or the legs of your body or this whole physical body is you? Or the mind which is a collection of your thoughts is you? The truth is you are nothing but a collection of your thoughts which is mind. What is the logical reasoning behind this? Even if you don't have hands, even if you don't have legs or even if your face is disfigured, you still exist. So you are nothing but your mind where you perceive by which you perceive the events that happens around you and which is the place where your thoughts and feelings arise. You are nothing but a collection of your thoughts. The place where these thoughts arise is the planet moon. Whatever you do is based on the thoughts that arise in your mind. You are doing an action based on which a positive effect or a negative effect happens in your life. Moon is a planet which is 4 lakh kilometers away from Earth. Moon is the Earth's only natural satellite and to be more specific and accurate, Moon is at a distance of 3 lakh 84,400 kilometers. There are many stars behind this or in other words I can say Moon is in front of all the stars. Even while we are explaining, we say the dasha and antadasha of the planets, we talk a lot about it. Moon acts like a filter of the light energy that it receives from the nakshatras. Therefore, the moon is the most important planet. If you put forward a question, if moon is more important than sun, I will definitely say yes. Even God is called Soma Sundara, not Sundara Soma. Soma is moon. As one of the prominent name of Lord Shiva is Soma Sundara, where you can see Soma leads the name. Moon is the planet that we see with our naked eyes and we receive the light energy of the moon. The light energy of the moon is always good to us whereas the light energy of the sun is not always good to us. Moon is the significator of the mind and sun is the significator of Atma which comprises this mind. Let me repeat, moon is the significator of the mind and sun is the significator of the soul which is composed of the mind. Indeed, if there is no life, there is no mind. That is a different topic. What happens when life exists? Your face exists, your hands exist. You exist as a physical body, 
when there is life. But if only mind exists, which is the birthplace of your thoughts, then you will be able to act. It is such a nonsense question to ask if mother is more important or father is more important. However, at one particular stage, mother is the most important. Even our legal system is in such a way that when the parents get divorced, the child grows under the guidance of the mother. Because only the mother can grow a child, can attend to the needs of the child. The father never takes care of the child and there could be some exceptions. Mother is the person who gives her own life to grow the child. She takes extreme care to grow the child. Therefore, the moon, which is a significator of mother and mind, is the most important planet. In any case, moon should never become weak in one's natal chart. Moon is the planet that rules our thoughts, that rules our mind. What is the role of the moon in one's life? I have written a book which is titled as Jodidam Ennu Maha Arpudam. I am having a plan to publish within a month. I indeed completed the work before one and a half or two years. Only one job was yet to be done like checking the punctuations, whether I have left anything important, etc. Writing a book and publishing it is like giving birth to a child and grooming it. It took almost two years to check whether I have dressed the child properly, whether I have groomed the child, etc. It becomes a great challenge to me to do all these. Though I have completed writing these articles, all these petty tasks delay publishing the book. Moon is the significator of mind and mother. If you see moon to be weak in the natal chart of a person or not in good position, then they will not have a stable mind. You might think like I repeat certain points in my videos that the luminous planets sun and moon are important then the natural benefit should be important like Jupiter and Venus and even Saturn is important and I address all the planets as important ones. So you might ask like why can't I say in a single line that all the planets are important? However, it is important to understand when there is no life, there is no physical body. When there is no physical body, there is no life, there is no functioning of the body of the person. When there is no mind which is encapsulated by the soul, which in turn encapsulated by the life of the person, that is Jiva, the life has no use. Moon is the planet that renders everything that helps to act in life once a person is born. This is the reason moon is said to be the most significant planet in the life of a person. Those who follow me definitely know that based on light energy of the moon, I make many predictions. Once a question was asked by my student, by which I was astonished. There is a psychological point which is as follows. The moment which has affected you a lot, some event, can be never forgotten by you. A person who has affected your life can never be forgotten. We won't even remember the names of the people who did a lot of good things to us. But in general, we will never forget the names of the people by whom our life was affected the most. Once one of my students asked a question, it was such an astonishing question. He asked me, why Amavasya moon when gets aspected by Jupiter, 
does not retain its light energy in the sky. Let me repeat his question. He asked why he cannot see Amavasya moon as a glowing moon while it receives the aspect of Jupiter based on the concept when moon gets aspected by Jupiter it retains its light. This question really made me to think in a lot of ways. The concept is when Jupiter aspects Amavasya moon, moon retains its light energy that it had lost. And the question of the student is based on this concept. Even when Amavasya moon receives the light energy of Jupiter, why it still stays dark in the sky and he could not see any light that gets reflected on the moon. Why can't we see the light with our naked eyes? It might be even a playful question or a very thoughtful question which he intend to be. These questions inspire us to think about certain concepts deeply. These sorts of questions inspire us to contemplate the subtlety and intricacies of astrological concepts. Each and every soul has got its light which our sages mentioned or addressed as Anma Oli or the light of the soul which cannot be seen with our naked eyes. Based on this we can say a planet receives light that we cannot see with our naked eyes yet it operates us. There are many rays such as ultraviolet rays, infrared rays which cannot be seen with our naked eyes though they have the strength to operate. I was wondering whether I should understand the concept of Subhatva and Pabhatva even in much deeper terms rather than what we see with our naked eyes. This sort of researching the light energy of the moon was indeed invoked by the question of this unknown subscriber. He made me think in different perspectives. I am very proud of this student and he invoked me to do research at core level. I do feel that this question is perfectly valid and I wanted to explore more about it. I even thought I could explore much more deeper intricacies. Having said all these, moon is a predominant planet in anybody's natal chart. There is no one without a mother. Likewise, nobody is without mind as well. Moon is the significator of mother and significator of mind. In any natal chart, moon should not be spoiled. What does it mean when moon is very strong in a natal chart? This person will have a good status of mind. The native will have a stable mind. This person will be able to think and make good decision. What will happen when moon gets affected? What will happen when somebody is born in Amavasya? As I mentioned now, if a person is born during Amavasya and still the moon has got some Subhatva by a natural benefit, then it is considered to be good. So if somebody questions like will my mind not be good if I am born during Amavasya then I will say the moon should have got some light energy from the other natural benefits which can become an antidote. At the same time not all of us have a stable mind. We all are not the people of the same mind. If a person has no goal in his life tosses and turns at the entrance of a task mark shop that is a liquor shop definitely his moon will not have any light energy. Therefore moon is such an important planet. Sun and moon are very important in one's life just like father and mother are important for a child's growth until the age of 15 or 17 
or until the child has got a mature mind. Mother is the most significant person in one's life and father is secondary. In order to make a good decision throughout the period of lifetime and to have a stable mind without any confusions and to have a good physique, moon is really really necessary. So in one's natal chart, if moon is not in 6th or 8th or 12th house and it is not eclipsed by Rahu or Ketu or not near Amavasya or when moon is waxing moon or even when moon is Amavasya but still has got connection of a natural benefit, the native is considered to be fortunate. There is no inimical house for the moon because moon is represented as a mother. Like a mother has no enemy in the family, the moon does not have any inimical house. There are houses that belong to the friends of the moon but no house or inimical to the moon. There is a difference between the house of the friend and the friendly house. You can very well understand this based on the concepts of the moon. In case of moon is exalted in the house of Taurus, though it is Amavasya moon, it has got Sthanabala. However, moon has to possess some light energy and it should also not be eclipsed. Moon should not be in conjunction with Rahu or Ketu. There are three different ranges of degrees we have to consider while predicting the conjunction of planets. They are 8 degrees, 13 degrees and 22 degrees. In case if two planets are 22 degrees apart even in the same house, it is not considered to be conjunction. Moon has no combustion dosha. However, this combustion is nothing but Amavasya. Please raise the question that why moon has no combustion dosha. While all the other planets suffer from combustion dosha, why moon does not suffer from dosha of combustion? Can you please write your answer in the comment section of this video? All the Panchabodha Tattva planets have dosha of combustion. Rahu and Ketu are shadowy planets and they are exceptional. While the five planets have combustion dosha, why moon does not have combustion dosha? Shall I explain the concept? Well, one of my subscribers, Jamuna ma'am, has written the correct answer that the moon does not revolve around the sun. The Panjabodha planets revolve around the sun whereas the moon does not revolve around the sun and it revolves around earth. Jamuna J, you are great ma'am. I am really happy to see my students giving me a lot of energy by their correct answers. When I see my students or subscribers or great thinkers, I am very very happy. The combustion works for the planets which revolve around the sun. To be precise, the planets which goes near the sun. Of course what she said is correct. She told that the planets that do not revolve around the sun do not suffer as Tanga Dosha. Moon is the planet which revolves around the earth, not the sun. Since moon revolves around earth, it has no combustion dosha. Please try to understand that all the astrological terms combustion, eclipse, inimical relationship, friendly relationship are all based on pure astronomical facts. They are scientifically true. If we understand these astronomical facts and concepts, then definitely we will understand astrology as well in its original dimension. Moon needs to have a lot of light energy in one's natal chart. 
moon should be in such a way that it can receive the light of the sun and reflect on earth. It should definitely have some light energy on its own. I explain this like the moon can be from Dashami Tithi in the waxing phase till Panchami Tithi in the waning phase. I repeat, moon from Dasami Tithi in waxing phase to Panchami Tithi waning phase has good light energy. In one of my premium videos, I explained all these with some images. Even in this live program, I have a plan to explain you pictorially. From Dashami Tidhi, the waxing phase till Panchami Tidhi, waning phase. During these days, moon will be in such a way that it has its own light energy. That is, it can receive the light energy from the sun and it can reflect on earth. Moon will deliver great benefits when it has got its own light energy. The second point is Subhatva of the moon, like the connection of natural benefits, Jupiter, Venus or the lone Mercury can give Subhatva to moon to a certain extent. When a Mercury and moon are in conjunction, please remember that Mercury treats moon as its enemy. Moon is a unique planet because it does not treat any other planet as its enemy. However, Mercury treats moon as its enemy. Well, when does moon deliver benefits? When it has its own light energy that is from waxing phase Dashami Titi till waning phase Panchami Titi. Dashami is the 10th day and Panchami is the 5th day. In simple words, I will say in the waxing phase that is when the moon is heading towards full moon, Purnima, from 10th day, 11th day, 12th day, 13th day, 14th day, moon will be in a good shape and it has got a lot of light energy. Moon will not lose its light energy until the 4th day or 5th day post Purnima. This sort of moon can deliver a lot of benefits. And one of my students raises a question about Sthanabala of Moon during Amavasya. Sthanabala during Amavasya means it has lost one status and gained another status. The own house status and exaltation status of the planet is based on gravity and based on its orbital path. Moon gets exalted in house of Taurus. In case if it is Amavasya and moon resides in Taurus, it will have immense strength because moon has gained Sthanabala and it has its own immense energy, light energy. For the native of Aquarius Ascendant, moon is the lord of 6th house and it gets exalted in the 4th house. What will happen when moon resides in Taurus for the native of Aquarius ascended? It will deliver the house effects of the 6th house with Sthanabala. Please try to understand when somebody gets a benefit, there will be a loss as well. Life itself is a blend of good and bad. If there is a profit, there will be a loss. If someone gets a good wife, he might not have good children. Or if a person gets good children, he will not have a good wife. If one gets both good wife and good children, then the person himself will not be a good one. There are lot of combinations in practical life. Life can never be 100% complete. It will have both gains and loss good and bad. There is no enemical house for the moon. I will address the house of Saturn as the house of enemy to the moon but the house itself is not enemical to the moon. 
whether it is capricorn or aquarius it is house of saturn whose house lord is an enemy to the moon and whose house is filled with lot of dark energy however moon treats all the planets as its children except the sun all the planets are like its children because moon is a significator of the mother whether a child is born to a female or not she will definitely treat all the young kids as her children i have heard that a mother who lost her child can still lactate on seeing other children as a result of mother's love this is the character of the mother the moon will have a mental state to approach any planet other than sun with such motherly love and tenderness so please try to understand the basic qualities of the moon moon actually signifies our mind and it helps the mind to act and through nakshatras moon operates the mind the light of the star which is mixed with the moonlight is transmitted to earth and the earth receives the light from the moon when i explain the natal chart of ex chief minister ms jailalitha i mentioned this point in my article titled magam jagattai alum i explained the concept the meaning of magam jagattai alum is when jailalitha was born she was born on purnima the moon receives the light from the sun which is straight opposite to it and it also receives the light from maga nakshatra and both these lights converge and the blend of these lights were delivered or reflected by the moon on the earth there is a saying called masi magam jagattai alum this is a fact what is the astrological explanation of the phrase masi magam jagattai alum during the month of masi when the moon is on maga nakshatra the moon will be purnima which is straight opposite to sun the pictorial representation of maga nakshatra is throne the light energy of maga nakshatra is in such a way that it helps a life to be born which is capable of great administration this light signifies an authoritative power and those who were born during this maga nakshatra will be authoritative which will be at different levels and which will vary based on other factors not all who were born during maga nakshatra can become a king or queen but these people can be authoritative for those in whose natal chart leo is strong ascendant lord is strong sun is strong they will be more authoritative as per the saying masi magam jagattai alum the moon will have great light energy during this month and during purnima the moon receives light from the sun and also from the maga nakshatra and it acts like a blender which blends these two light energy and reflects this light energy on the earth with the blend of the light that it received it also blends its own light energy which is considered to be very auspicious the focal point of the light reflected by the moon is where the life with such great administrative power is born please remember the example i told for the preparation of coffee like blending milk decoction and sugar the very same applies here though the same day at the very same time many children were born why was jayalalitha alone able to become a chief minister of tamil nadu 
or she could gain such an authoritative position in her life. I would like to explain this as follows. The moon filters the light that it receives from the sun and the nakshatra and this gets converged and passed through the moon and a very accurate focal point where this light falls on earth makes the birth to be very very special. More we travel away from this focal point the authoritative power or the leadership power gets reduced. The children who are born at different specific places will have leadership quality at variable length in different domains. This is the subtlety or the secret of different standards of life of children who were born at the same time. This is what Almighty has allowed me to explore. With the knowledge that Almighty has blessed, I found these subtleties. This is the fundamental concept of Subhatva. And we can explore much more based on these concepts. There is no enemical house for the moon. However, there can be houses whose house lord moon treats as its enemy. The mother treats all the houses equally. Even when moon is not in its own house or exalted and moon resides in other houses, when it gets Tanabala or when it is not Amavasya, which is said to be a sort of combustion, and when it has got the connection of natural benefits such as Jupiter or Venus, it will definitely deliver benefits. When moon is not eclipsed and has got the connection of natural benefits, it will deliver benefits. Immediately you should not question whether it will make a person a billionaire. As per the responsibility of the planet moon, it will deliver its benefits. What is the responsibility of the moon in your natal chart? Please check it and moon will deliver its effects based on it. For the native of Aquarius ascendant, they should not undergo moon dasha, that is major planetary period. I know there will be many natives of Aquarius ascendant who will immediately write in the comment section of this live video that they went almost near to death and then they came up in their life. Or there are many people who will write they merely lived as corpses. Why moon brings such a pain in the life of the native of Aquarius ascendant? Because Lord of the Sixth House will give effects for which it is responsible. In case if the native is Sagittarius ascendant and he undergoes the major planetary period of the moon, where moon has lost its strength and pabatwa, then it will affect the longevity of the native. Because moon is the lord of the 8th house for the native of Sagittarius ascended, which really signifies the longevity of the person. When the moon is in conjunction with the planet, it will affect the longevity of the bhava that the moon owns or the bhava of the planet that is with the moon. This applies for the native of Sagittarius ascendant. Being the lord of the 8th house when it resides in a particular house, it affects the longevity of the person signified by the 8th house. The longevity of the native is affected and based on the position of the moon, based on its connection with other planets, it affects the longevity of the person that is signified by the house. When the 8th house lord is affected and pabatwa, it doesn't mean that immediately the native's longevity gets affected. You have to definitely think about the other combination. The moon, when it is lord of 6th house or 8th house, 
gives very worse effects to the native. For the native of Pisces ascendant, Moon, who is the lord of fifth house, gives fortunes and children to the native. The major planetary period of Moon will be very auspicious for this native. So please consider the responsibility of the planet and Stanabala of the planet and then make predictions. Please don't check Shadbala, rather check Drigbala, Subhatva in order to make predictions. Moon is the significator of the mind and mother. A person in whose natal chart Moon is strong will take care of the mother very well and will have got a very beautiful mind. I have proved this even with examples of native of Taurus Lagna or Rashi and Cancer Lagna or Rashi people. The native of Taurus ascendant will be extremely attached to the mother and the fact is the spouse of the native of Taurus ascendant will receive a biased treatment from her husband because these natives will care more about his mother than his wife. This will apply for all the native of Taurus ascendant or Taurus Rashi whose moon has got good strength. Is your husband Taurus Rashi? Then definitely he will treat and take care of his wife lesser than his mother. The Taurus Rashi people will be very sensitive and react badly if anything is said about his or her mother badly. Though the mother of Taurus Rashi is responsible for some mistake, the native will not be able to accept it. In case you have given birth to a Taurus Rashi child, definitely your son is going to be very affectionate towards you. When the significator of the mother is exalted in one's natal chart, then definitely the person will get a good mother and a beautiful good mind. A good mind and a good mother is such an essential one in life. A mother has a dominant role in the life of a child in growing the child as a responsible person and to have a lot of self-confidence. Only then comes the father's role. A mother is the one who grows the child. To sum up, water is signified by moon and white colored products are signified by moon. The white colored products such as rice and salt are signified by the moon whereas sugar is signified by which planet? Can you please write the answer in the comment section? Yes, you are right. It is signified by Venus though it is white in color. Those which are constantly running, which are constantly functioning, whose lifetime is very less are signified by moon. The reason is moon takes only two and quarter days to cross a nakshatra and it takes 27 days to traverse the entire natural zodiac. The products which immediately gets its life lost is signified by moon. Based on color, speed, characteristics of moon, you can identify the products signified by moon. Moon is the significator of mother. Moon is the significator of mind. Moon represents feminine qualities, beauty, women. The girls from 18 to 25 are signified by Venus. Whereas moon signifies the ladies from 28 and not exceeding 40. We can call it as a middle aged woman. Mother also belongs to middle aged woman category. A virgin girl cannot be a mother. This is why Venus does not signify mother. See how subtle is astrology. The two planets that signify female are Venus and moon. 
the one which is neither male nor female or even very old lady or signified by Saturn. The one who exceeds 40 or 50 years, the majority cannot become a mother. Therefore, within women there are different categories and astrology does not miss at all to identify each. A virgin girl who is eligible to become a mother is signified by Venus. A girl who is not eligible to become a mother, that is very young girl, is signified by Mercury. Who is not mature is signified by Mercury. A boy or girl who has not attained their puberty or signified by Mercury. A girl who has not attained puberty is signified by Mercury. A girl who has attained puberty and who has not lost her virginity is signified by Venus. A girl who lost her virginity who is eligible to become a mother or who became a mother or signified by Moon. In other words, we can call this as young aged women. The range of age of these ladies will be from 25 years till 40 or 45 years of age. To sum up, moon signifies liquids, white colored products, products that relate to beauty, makeup artists, not actors or actresses, but makeup artists, hairdressers. I am not listing all the significance of the moon here. There are many things that has to be listed. I am telling you all the significance in a hurry and I miss few. Since water is signified by moon, agriculture which uses water dominantly in a great amount is also signified by moon. Paddy agriculture is also signified by moon. You can explore more from the significance I have explained so far. Please learn the significance of the moon separately which is very much needed for the predictions. Well, in my upcoming video, I am going to explain about the effects of moon in different houses for the native of Aries ascendant. And definitely I will manage the time, please don't worry. Well, this is question time. For the native of Aquarius Ascendant, when moon has got Sthanabala, when it is very strong, will it deliver benefits or worse effects? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. In the description box, we have added the playlist link of all English videos so far published. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.